a lot of people might be familiar with this photograph and you know, the usual permutations on the caption, which generally refer to the smug look on the young woman's face, uh, her dreadlock appearance. Uh, she is known as the smug hippie meme. Um, a lot of people say that I'm a smug individual. I've been told that all of my life and not without justice. I think that smugness is a vice of mine along with arrogance. I'm aware of that. Um, I'm not going to say that uh, I can't do anything about it, but these two vices are a lot more difficult to overcome than one might think. But, be that as it may, the phenomenon of moral smugness and moral certainty and a belief that one is righteous or perhaps holier than thou, is again another sort of feeling, another sort of face to present to the world or um, persona to adopt when dealing with the world that's as old, I believe, as civilization itself. I think that smugness is an inevitable byproduct of an attempt to establish a morality, a uh, common morality with all of its pluses and minuses, all of its surfeits and deficits, where you have people who are morally upright and morally, as it were, in the black, and you have people who are morally remiss, i.e. morally in the red. This kind of smug individual, or something along those lines developing inside of one's character, is, I think, an inevitable byproduct of a good-slash-bad-centered morality, good-evil morality, rather. Um, <clears throat> because if we do have people who are on the continuum morally uh, more upright than other people, that's going to have some sort of gratifying effect on them, uh, to believe that one is above average in terms of morality. Uh, being above average in any way tends to actually affect one's, well, ego, I suppose. That in and of itself really isn't that big of a deal. There's nothing wrong, I suppose, with you know, this young lady sitting there looking down on everybody who might be munching on a hot dog or who might be um, not sufficiently opposed to whatever war happens to be going on. Um, there's really nothing wrong with that. You know, you, you see elements of this in um, Charles Dickens in a great deal of 19th century literature or, you know, morality literature throughout the ages. The person who has turned being moral into a vice. Now, our smug hippie here, it's more of a passive-aggressive vice where, you know, she's simply playing with your mind, but it, she overplays her hand to the point where it backfires and she is shown up to be exactly what she is. Just a smug moralizer who is attempting to th to make everyone think that she's better than they are. Believe you me, I'm on the receiving end of that kind of censure so often that I know exactly what it feels like and the dynamics of it. <clears throat> now, what interests me in terms of ethics by denunciation is this kind of smugness a form of denunciation. I would say that it is. I would say that it's a denunciation um, carried out in a passive-aggressive way and in a way that is difficult to actually respond to. I can imagine this young lady having to watch how she behaved herself had she had lived in medieval Germany, say 1500, because pretty soon somebody would get pretty fed up with having her smirking at them and rumors would begin. Rumors would begin to the point where, um, well, she might run the very real risk of ending up tied to a stake being burned alive in 1500. <clears throat> what is it about this kind of thing that is so irritating? This kind of passive-aggressive, smug denunciation that is very difficult to answer, or at least for a lot of people, when they can't really see it for what it is. 
I would posit the view that it's based upon our own desire to be this individual. An oblique, or I would say backhand, desire to be morally upright ourselves. And her demonstrating how she is more, quote unquote, morally upright than we are, is a form of aggression. It's a subliminal form of aggression, but it's a form of aggression nonetheless. <clears throat> I would say that the whole idea of morality, of being a morally upright person or a righteous person, with its concomitant opposites, i.e. someone who's in a moral deficit, a sinner, a bad person, whatever you want to call that, makes this kind of aggression and denunciation inevitable. Um, especially when we go into the negative of it. In other words, we're not really attempting to make the world a better place. We are here to fight evil. When you have an ethic that says that we need to fight evil, and we have a yardstick by which we can judge people for being good or evil, or their position on that continuum, you inevitably get this kind of denunciation, this kind of aggressive morality, this kind of ethical system that essentially relies upon denunciation, even if of a completely subtle variety. Just because something is subtle doesn't mean that it's not got the power of a nuclear reaction inside of the human psyche. Um, this kind of imputation of guilt upon other people for being in a moral deficit is one of the most powerful psychological forces, in my opinion, that there is. And if you want to have pure power in this life, Make yourself the arbiter of what people, uh, what people's moral worth actually is. You are the one who decides who is morally in the black and who is morally in the red. Ethics by denunciation.